Welcome to another episode of This Is My Architecture. My name is Stas and I'm here today with Jonathan from Thinko. Um, how about you tell me a bit more about what you do? Sure, so we're using next generation telematics to actually empower consumers, give them portable driving scores and actually take control of their driving data to uh, give them access to cheaper car insurance, rewards, but also help them when they most need it when they've had an accident. Mm -hmm. Okay, and well, what happens then if there's an accident? Well, when they have an accident, they need help as quickly as possible. So we need to have a system in place that actually identifies what's going on, what's happened, mm -hmm. is anyone injured, do they need a hire car, do they need salvage, or even worse, do they need emergency services? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't wait to hear about how it actually works behind the scenes. Uh, so let's just deep dive into the architecture. Um, how do the cars communicate to the overall environment? So we've got a retrofit device that goes into the vehicle and that communicates with the IoT platform. Mm -hmm. So we're getting billions of points a day coming into the platform. Mm -hmm. So it needs to process that. We're using the rules engine in order to work out actually where to send that data to. Mm -hmm. Got it. So data ingested via IoT. Uh, I imagine obviously use the MQTT endpoint. You mentioned you use the rules engine. Are, are there any other features that you're using? Yeah, so we're using IoT Defender to ensure that the fleet is safe and it's protected and locked down. But we're also then using Certificate Manager so that each device has its own unique certificate mm -hmm. and that if Defender flags something, we can just lock that device down straight away. Mm -hmm. Got it. And uh, so you also mentioned billions of events per day. That's massive. Like, are you having any challenges to deal with that scale? Traditionally with vehicles, they, they run a lot in the morning, they run a lot in the evening, and so you need a system that supports the peak. But by using IoT and Kinesis, we're able to actually manage that and just scale up to requirements and scale down as necessary mm -hmm. without having to worry about servers or demand. Mm -hmm. oh, sweet, good to hear. Um, and, and so what is the next step? So uh, an event comes in, IoT, so if we use an accident as an example, the accident comes straight in and we pass that straight through to Lambda. When someone has an accident, we don't want Kinesis streams with 100 accidents at a time being processed. So we then, in that Lambda function, we determine what's going on. Mm -hmm. Is this a real accident? If so, then we do two things. The first is we invoke step functions because there are, in an accident, there's a series of steps that take place. You need to check what's gone on and what's going on around. But at the same time, we also invoke Connect. This allows us to talk directly to the customer via the device and actually work out from them what's going on. Mm -hmm. If they don't talk to the device, we also then contact them via a mobile phone because people get out of cars when they have accidents sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we determine what's going on and actually, are they okay? Mm -hmm. If they're not okay, they've had an accident, they're injured, we pan them straight through to an agent. Mm -hmm. So an injured people don't have to talk to AI bots all day. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. So, so Connect, Amazon Connect, you use, it's used basically as a router. Yep. It also allows you to either uh, basically call into the car or to, to the person, yep. or have the car kind of initiate the... Exactly. Got it. And how does Lex fit in? So what type of interactions do you have with Lex on the customer side and with Lex on the back end? So we're using Lex via Connect because obviously cars move around and the signal, but what Lex allows us to do is get the customer's version of events. So depending on what they say, that invokes different step functions. So if they've hit a car, the steps that this invokes is very different to whether they've hit a tree. Mm -hmm. So depending on what the customer responds, we treat it very differently. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. And so uh, I also noticed that, you know, there's the step functions process going on. Uh, there's different decisions are made. I also noticed this recognition. How does that kind of play into it? So as part of step functions, if it knows that the vehicle that it's working to has got video, it, mm -hmm. we ingest the video real time, 12 seconds before, 12 seconds after, and then run that through recognition for a couple of reasons. Firstly, facial recognition and vehicle plate recognition, actually working out, have we seen these faces before? Have they been involved in any fraudulent claims in the past? The vehicle in front, have we seen that vehicle before? But secondly, we've got agents involved that are going to take over that accident eventually. We need to ensure that the video is safe for them to look at. 99% of accidents will be fine, but you want to alert them just that this does this need to be dealt with by a special handler because it's not mm -hmm. pretty footage. Got it. Okay, and uh, recognition will do that filtering for you. Exactly. I understand. What happens at the end? So when everything basically is so finished. The important thing for us is to get that customer where they need to be, whether it be a high card service and looking after that customer, making sure they have the best experience possible in a terrible situation for them. Mm -hmm. But then after that accident, they're going to need help with their insurance company, with the police. So we use DynamoDB to actually provide them a full report. We store a full report of actually what's gone on. The, the graph of the sensor data, mm -hmm. uh, a reconstruction, the transcripts, and both the agent and consumer have access to that, and they can share it with the insurance company or the police or whoever they want to via their app. Mm -hmm. okay. Very interesting. Uh, Jonathan, thanks so much for sharing. No, thank you very much for letting me talk about it. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.